Hi, hello, this is Jules the Human here, and welcome to the Jules the Man Anime Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Jules the Human, and every week we dive into some anime with y'all, and then we come out and we talk about it, give our thoughts, give our feelings, whether we like something, whether we hated something, and then we go on and move on to some more anime episodes. But in this one, we are going to pick a brand new anime after we're done with episode 9 through 13 of overlord the very first season of overlord and we have a lot to pick from we're going to get into all that we have so much to talk about but i'm not talking here alone about the season one of overlord i'm here with my co-host matt galley matt how's baldur's gate <laughs> <laughs> man i cannot get out of the forgotten realms it is so much fun just making little characters and seeing what'll happen what's gonna happen with this one you so I'm... you've only you've shown me or you've posted one do you have mm -hmm. multiple characters or is it the same character skin i'm in three different all... campaigns and each one is a completely unique character right now oh. in like in a campaign with three people multiplayer two people multiplayer and then i'm playing a solo campaign too the solo campaign i have the most amount of progress in but that's like barely sure it's a uh, each one we're like five to seven hours in so far but each mm -hmm. one feels completely distinct so uh if you're watching this and you're thinking about buying Baldur's Gate, uh, go ahead and do it. Support and Larry's with Matt. videos. And then, yeah, <laughs> jump in the Discord and start a, let's new, start a campaign. Start a new campaign. <laughs> I'm the paladin, though. Oh, okay. No, just, kidding. <laughs> just kidding. So, yeah. So, uh, have you had time to watch some anime? Because yeah. We're going to talk about <laughs> episode 9 through 13 of Overlord. And we need to get through uh, pretty quickly. Is different because we have five episodes this week. But at the end of this episode, we're going to rate it. We rate it on our own scale. We rate the whole entire season of Overlord. And then we pick from a new uh, a list, an anime chest that some are user submitted. Some are submitted by us. And here's what it looks like now. There's so many of them. I had to put the little chest guy at the bottom. He's peeking up the anime chest. Uh, but we have all of these anime to pick from. And it's going to be one of these. Uh, so for the coming weeks, we're going to watch this one of these anime. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to talk about it and discuss it just like we did with Overlord. Uh, but we're going to pick that at the end of the show. But we have so much to get through. We have to rate yeah. it. We have to go through all these episodes. Ton of stuff to talk about. So let's get started. Episode 9, the, the Dark Warrior. We sort of left off on like a cliffhanger for last week. Yes. And then this one kind of concluded the the little story that they were telling so what happens in episode nine yeah it's a it's a lot of a lot of action so to to keep it like to keep it light for the sake that we're we're all a part of this anime club and we've all watched it we're here to talk about it recap it nabe and Ainz each engage <clears throat> in combat with their opponents clementine and kaj uh Ainz learns a lot about martial arts from dueling clementine but ultimately, they each reveal their true forms and uh, annihilate their respective foes. Ainz enters the crypt and frees Nefiria from capture, and they return to Erantel. Uh, mission accomplished. Now, some of these shots, <clears throat> I've got to say right off the bat, ex I mean, I guess including the entire show, like this was the cool episode for yeah. me this looked amazing a lot of this stuff just looked gorgeous the way that they were fighting the animation so the payoff. dragon <laughs> yeah so much payoff for this little arc and um the way the dragons looked with the animation it looked so gorgeous it was great um i really enjoyed uh my my favorite part out of this whole fight was something that mm, some people might not have even noticed sure but it's the moment where you know the skeleton dragon comes out and nabe is faced with an opponent who's immune to magic that nabe is able to cast and so nabe makes the decision to tie down the um why am i forgetting the scabbard of their sword uh yeah the hilt so that way it stays on 
and improvises a bludgeoning weapon i like i wanted to scream i was like that's so cool oh, like dear. oh i can't kill it with my magic i'll yeah. beat it to death <laughs> <laughs> again skeleton dragon but uh and the whole like uh they're both casters so he's standing there buffing up the dragon trying to make it so that way you know it can uh it can hurt her because she's yeah. just uh pairing all of its attacks deflecting everything and so she in rebuke uh in rebuttal just like buffs herself up and just buffs herself Everybody up you know it's gonna go for the long range first you gotta get the the casters out first the ones that are healing the the people that are gonna go attack you uh and th that was kind of what she did um but she did in such a cool way and i was so i don't know i was like yes this is what it i don't have any much written down really because this was just really cool yeah um what i can say about overlord is that some of these fights are really fun um they're not too long uh you know even the last fight like i didn't feel like you know dragon ball z like they were talking too much there was a little bit of that where there was take there were some pauses here where they kind of explained what was going on or what was happening but it, it didn't ever feel like too much where some animes can feel bloated a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as far as the combat in this anime, it was all pretty good, pretty streamlined and really fun to look at and really fun to engage. Visual, visually distinct and interesting, honestly, yeah. is uh, how I would put it for sure. Mm -hmm. Um and then yeah, so on the so that's that's Nabe and Kaj going at it over there. And then on the flip side of it, you get uh you get Ainz and Clementine fighting where she's mocking him for just being a lug head lug head like a big brute swinging around a sword yeah. and so he's like all right then come attack me and she finally uh starts to nothing works she tries like going for a shoulder move and uh and his armor is just too thick so he finally goats her into like doing a uh like her full send attack uh, both electrocuting and mm -hmm. inflaming him but uh after revealing taking his helmet off revealing that he's an undead mm -hmm. her she immediately realizes the the gravity of the situation she's found herself in and the i have it noted here man the voice actress for clementine was so good throughout the whole thing really throughout the whole thing i really enjoyed the voice acting for this character and whenever he's squishing her whenever he's just like grab like the void the the screams the guttural screams yeah. i was like oh my god my chest like you feel it and i was like oh wow i can't even imagine in the booth like okay you're getting crushed to death give yeah. us something yeah. and then just like unleashing and it's so <laughs> good it comes out so well in the anime it's so good um i really i didn't like it but i like that part where no I, I know what you mean it's, because it's crunchy it's weighty it makes you feel the impact of the scene yeah and what i don't know uh with eins doing that it made me feel like he is formidable i mean i we we know that he doesn't have emotions really but it was still jarring to see him do that to see mm -hmm. him crush somebody to death because in their world it's death yeah to him maybe it's still a video game but he's slowly realizing that this may be his entire life now. But still, seeing someone crush someone to death by just holding them in their like in your face and watching them die, like that's insane. I still want to put that, even though that that part's hard to watch, it's still to me, it still doesn't hold any like it still doesn't hold as much weight as the thought of like what Clementine did to, you know. Because he's like, you probably, you know, true alive this person like slowly, sure. just like I'm doing to you right now. Sure. Huh? Like, and he brought it back. Yeah. Yes. So true. that's the karmatic circle of that. But then also he also he doesn't really draw it to karma. He says, forgot to tell you, I'm a hypocrite. That's how he that's how he leaves it. So, mm. you know, it, it, it there's a there's a weird like thing going on with him for sure. And I, mm -hmm. I agree with that. But I still feel like it's just like even though that's hard to watch it's like if you you just know it's justified mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's justified for sure claire says good sound effects and music always elevate things yes and that's what um i think this has i really enjoy the music i really excuse me i burp. uh i really enjoy the opening song i really enjoy the the momentum 
uh, of the fights and all that stuff. So it's been pretty good. Um, <laughs> CZ, hello, CZ. hello, everybody watching on Twitch. If you want to watch these shows live, they're usually on Thursdays, 11 CST. Um, I know we have a lot of people watching on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching on YouTube. You can watch it live or you can watch it on Spotify as well. So we appreciate it. Uh, managed to join for once. Is the Lord over? It is about to be over soon today. We are going to pick a new anime. So we're talking about the end of season one. Um, we had some some talk about, you know, I think we've had it a little bit before, but we have it now about, you know, the whole skeletal dragons resist magic, that they're seventh level magic. We're starting to get into like the actual tiers and what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, but if you're a gamer, you kind of already know that. It, you're, if you're thinking video game, you know that there's resi resistances to different types and that there's a tier of magic, especially when you're, if, you know, like, I've played Final Fantasy XIV. Matt's played Final Fantasy XIV. There are different levels to things. Mm -hmm. uh, or even uh, Dungeons and Dragons <clears throat> where you have different uh, spell level spell slots. <clears throat> and you can unlock them different levels uh, once you get higher and more mm -hmm. powerful. So we're getting that introduction to that. I'm not too sure if we got some of that before, but they're really mentioning it a lot now. Um, Claire said, I ended up watching a lot more of Overlord while I was sick, which surprised me as I really didn't expect to be into it. Neither did I. <laughs> oh yeah because we're gonna we're gonna find out how we felt <laughs> and uh yeah i liked um i like this arc because this is the end of the arc and then for the last four episodes it's like here's another little mini arc mm -hmm. so that's the end of episode nine we get the big payoff here they get rescued uh nefuria mm -hmm. and then the quest <clears throat> was completed <clears throat> and that's a great shot. I, I love the bit of Hammond like uh, running to Ainz, but it's the first time seeing him in his like without any armor on. So he's like, oh my God, a monster. Yeah. <laughs> and Nave is like stomps on him. He's like, don't talk about Lord Ainz that way. <laughs> so we get into episode 10, True Vampire. And this starts off the next little mini arc to finish <laughs> off the season. So what happens in episode 10? Episode 10. So, uh, Sebus, one and uh, Sebus, Shaltier, and one of the battle maids, Solution, engage in their side quest to hunt down a martial arts user or magic caster to kidnap for Ainz. Luring a group into a reverse ambush, Shaltier cuts down a bunch of mercs and mass. However, they catch wind of the however they catch wind of the mercs hideout hideout with word of a powerful martial arts user there who challenges Gazoff, Gazef Stronoff in terms of prowess. A raid on the hideout leads to Shaltier engaging in combat with the martial arts user, Brain. Brain freeze, flees. <laughs> freezes uh, brain, and flees. Brain freeze? Hold on. Brain freeze. <laughs> brain flees. After witnessing her power, however, Shaltier reveals her vampire form and pursues. Another group arriving gets slain by Shaltier as well, with her enthralling the only survivor. Learning that help has been sent for, Shaltier lashes out at the first group that she's able to find nearby, and a seemingly powerful spell puts her into stasis as she lashes out with one last attack. Ainz is informed that Shaltier has revolted against him as a result. Um... This was interesting. This was um, it, it caught me like I didn't understand. For I didn't understand yeah. for a little while. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I knew it was going to be the beginning of something else. I didn't yeah. know where they were going. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they don't they don't explain a whole lot, which is good and bad, I think. For a, a general anime person watcher, they may be put off by it uh, a little bit. And maybe I wouldn't have continued if it wasn't for the show for for the podcast i would have been like oh okay this kind of weird maybe i'll watch it later maybe i won't you know what i mean but <clears throat> yeah to some people it, it was just it could be a little odd because, whenever but I had shows to have that it... that complete shift where like i just don't really know what's going on for maybe like half of the episode because it's trying to set something up 
sometimes I, it just puts me in this weird limbo state where I'm like, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be like paying attention to. Should mm-hmm. I care about these characters? Mm-hmm. What's going on? Because we see a whole other like group of people while this was going on, this is happening. You know, while sure. the we've been watching the battle, there's been this other little side story going on. Especially coming off that you. super high note to then bring it right back to like a reset. Like it's mm-hmm. just kind of a little jarring where I, I understand like in retrospect, but in the moment when I'm watching that, that's where I'm at with the show gotcha uh dan says my company blocked twitch on wi-fi and it barely gets service but i'm here wow we've seen people uh we've seen companies do youtube i don't know much about companies blocking twitch that sucks i'm sorry hopefully you can hear most of what we're saying uh we meet this new character brain and he is the strongest in the kingdom we 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 know we learn about his little arc which was kind of cool that he's meant to you know defeat gazif who we've known before. He developed all of his techniques specifically to defeat Gazef Stronoff. And he seems we, more he seems more like if we want to get into stat cards, he seems more like a dexterity fighter, where Gazef is more like a strength fighter. Sure. And that's cool. Yeah. I love I they're love di- that little diversified, yeah. It's interesting. We, it, it's super quick to establish a character whenever we just meet him. And it's like by basing him off of a character we already know, a character that we've known for a couple episodes, it's like, hey, I'm going to, this is what I'm about. And it's like, oh, okay, this is going to be interesting, hopefully, you know what I mean? Whenever we finally get there. And I do like this episode had me lost almost up until that point where brain gets introduced. And then I'm like, okay, I kind of, I'm kind of on board with this and then shell tier like just shuts him down and then i'm like okay i like that i like that Mm -hmm. it's set up this is this character equally as strong blah 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 blah. but then we get to see just her just dismantle the entire like hideout without breaking a sweat uh, for more or less uh claire says i think it's partly that they wander off and follow random characters for little arcs and for a while you don't really know who anyone is or why it matters yeah well, Not like, until later. We, and and that's like we know these characters except for Solution. Uh, we know Sebus and Sheltier, but we don't really know of I, their capabilities. I think it was this character that threw me off. I'm that like, am I supposed to yeah. know her? Yep. yep. I was Solution like, threw me off for sure. I was like, do I know this person? And why is she the way she is? She made like a really creepy face, and I was <laughs> like, what is this about? So I think that sort of threw me off. Me racking my brain while the story was going, like, who is this? Who, do we know? Do have we seen this person before? Whatever. Um, but in this, we get uh, they some fumbled more. her introduction, basically. Sure, that's all that happened. Yeah. Where sure. in a manga, it probably would have been more fleshed out. Um, but uh, okay, one of my overarching things about this, and I'm going to get into it more at the last episode, is that they're they're putting a lot in 13 episodes, or they're trying to do a lot in 13 episodes. But then I don't even know if. I would have liked it more if it was stretched out more. You know what I mean? My yep. solution would have been like, oh, just spend some more time on these little arcs and not not trying to cram everything to, thing together. But then I think, would I enjoy it as much if it was so stretched out? Because I liked the pacing. So I don't know what the solution is. I feel like there was too much going on. <laughs> but then I also feel like if they stretched it out, I wouldn't have liked it. So I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's it's weird for me because there's so much here. Introduce new characters, new arc, whatever. Uh, but the, the action's really cool. I gotta say the action stuff with uh Shalt here just wrecking fools, just being insane, and we see the full <laughs> power. Dude. Uh, <laughs> Solutions oh, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> she just sucked him into her boobs. I forgot about that. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, cool. So that's that's the solution. She's the solution. She's okay. Soluble. Oh, okay. Makes sense. No. I think it works if you're invested in the world more than any particular character. Yes. Yeah. I feel like yes. yeah. I feel like we're discovering the world just as quickly as Ayn's. And I need more information for me as the viewer. I wish there was some parts where more parts where the main cast isn't shown and we went down those little things to understand it a little bit more like we see some shots of the bad guys doing stuff which was cool which is really telling because they've lived in this world we get some shots of the the big bad 
overlord whatever thing that's happening outside of this like the big story about the uh you know the wars that are gonna probably be yeah. set later on like we see all that stuff outside of over or outside of Ayn's doing all this other stuff i want to see more of that to establish the world a little bit more because i really don't know what's going on what's happening with all the different clans and stuff who has the power why do they have power you know what i mean I, or maybe like a flashback i don't know um i want to be more invested in the world for sure and i think i uh, like i think episode 13 sets yes that all up very yes. well in my opinion but we don't we we haven't gotten there yet sure, obviously. Sure. yeah um episode 10 shelter's true form shelter has been changed somehow and goes into this stasis and we don't know what's going on that's pretty much what happens in episode uh, 10 we see her uh her true form and her abilities because we haven't seen her abilities actually we know mm -hmm. all of the um all of Ainz's people that are guardians are made from the supreme beings uh are amazing are really good but we haven't seen it we with her we see shalt here doing some some pretty cool stuff taking out a whole group of people mm -hmm. so that leads into episode 11 confusing and understanding what happens in episode 11 Episode eleven, uh, the uh, the le leader of the Adventurers Guild summons uh, Mamunga to discuss the vampire that was found nearby. Eins gives her a fake name and says he's been hunting her for a very long time. He warns other adventurers if they come along, they will die, which turns out to be a threat, not a warning. Eins realizes that Shaltir is under mind control and attempts to break it by using a spell from a super magic item that he owns, uh, allowing him to grant a wish, cast a wish. However, his wish, his wish is rejected. Withdrawing, Ainz realizes that the magic is in a different class, world item magic specifically. Ainz returns to Nazarek to arm himself with other world class items in an attempt to defeat Shaltir in one-on-one one -on -one combat. Albedo abhors this call to action, but is persuaded by Ainz in his conviction that he is the only person capable of defeating her. This was pretty cool. I liked all also, of this. I like this episode for sure. I also like Pandora's actor. Pandora's actor. <laughs> who is the MVP of this episode because of how... Ainz reacts to him how everybody else looks so cool like all the characters we've already meet, met albedo shalt here the whole crew has been made by one of his friends and then we finally find a character that was made by Ainz, and it's this guy <laughs> and he's like he speaks german he's like he he's the the holder of all the world tier items and he's loyal for sure but he's a little off He's a little weird, and he's embarrassing Ainz, and that was such a cool little dynamic there. I really like that. And he like he calls <laughs> he calls the uh, he calls the other guardians uh, ladies, and they're like, "Don't do ladies." That. Yeah, like, we are. We'll we'll fight you right now. <laughs> we're battle we'll mates. Stop it! Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. I love that. I love and that. Little... Then he does something like calling them like petite flowers or something like that, and that's when Ainz like grabs him, and bro, throws chill. him the way. Yeah, bro. I need you. I need you to chill. All right. <laughs> that that's that was a cool part. Right, I, I know like... ain't nobody come to your your tomb in a long time, and I know you're excited to see some people, but just stop saluting. Stop with the German and let's all be chill. I wonder what his powers are, really, because he has to be super powerful to guard the world tier items, right? Just as much as anybody else. Probably. <clears throat> and he's made by the leader of the guild. So I'm curious if we're going to ever see him in battle or somebody try and steal some world tier items and him have to defend it. And we see that. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. But in this episode, we get some more magic tiers. So we have the 1 through 10, I guess, magic tiers of regular magic that people know about, that the, the this world knows about. Because that's what they've been basing it off of is like, oh, they can use third tier magic. Oh, this is resistant to fifth tier. This is seventh tier. Tenth tier, I think, is the highest it's gotten. And then above the magic tiers is the super magic tier, which is, I don't know if it has any 
one, two, three, whatever on that. Super magic, yeah. Maybe just super magic at the magic. top. And then you and have then, world item. And then above that, we have world tier magic, which is the highest form, which is what uh, is controlling Shal tier because Eins did his uh, super tier, super magic, and it was not it was effective. denied. It was not so, effective because <clears throat> something else was used that was of world class tier. Are you on board with this magic yeah. scale? I I, I I really like the magic scale. I like having the whole okay, we, we all know about one to ten or whatever. We like most people we we can follow one to ten. Sure, there's one tier above that that's just like super. Super's above all the one to ten. Oh, but then you put world above super because world has the enough power to like do world altering events. Sure. Sure. Next universe tier. Give us universe tier. Whatever. <laughs> like as long as it makes sense on that scale. Yeah. Like whatever. Keep keep it coming. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, we find out that there are 20 world tier items that were once used, uh, that once they are used, they're done. I think I got that right, right? That once they're used, the, t the world tier items are done mm -hmm. and they're they're gone or whatever. And that now Ainz is knows that there are world tier items in this world. So he brought over all of his world tier items from Yggdrasil. And now in this new world, there's other world tier items that he which can possibly he not collect. Encountered yet. Yeah, which and he that's had why, not encountered and yet. That's why well. immediately when the wish was rejected, he was like, we're leaving. And he teleported out of there. It's like, I don't I don't know what's going on. I don't know if there are people watching. I don't know if that's a trap. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. New information changes everything. Mm -hmm. Which he's a good strategist. Yeah. I mean, that's what uh, it sets he's it up. He's good at being reactive. It sets sure. it up because he's he was the leader of the best one of the best guilds in the game. Mm -hmm. So you would think that one of the best guild leaders would be this way and want to get as much information and know all the tools at his disposal and when to use them and when not to. That's why he used the super magic item mm -hmm. to test mm -hmm. and say, this should do it. Yeah. But if it doesn't, then I gotta Something's bring up funny. the big Something's off. And, yeah. <laughs> vibes are off over yeah, here. Yeah, vibes are off. <laughs> vibes are off over here, and now I gotta go see this guy. Yeah. <laughs> to go get my friend. Enter World Pandora's Trials. actor. Yeah. <laughs> which we saw his one move, I guess, was he can shapeshift, which was yeah. kind of cool. But I want to see what like his battle, his battle stuff is. Maybe he takes on their abilities. Pandora's actor his name makes it makes makes sense so i'm really i want to know more about this character because he was like the mvp of the episode i really liked True. him he's really funny um so we find out that in the in the the where all the world tier items is he has all his friends there and they're holding them and they're all his, they left all of their loot to him which is another interesting thing that we didn't know until now we knew that they left we knew that they went to go live their life outside of yggdrasil outside of the game but we didn't know that they were like, here, bud, you can have it all, put it all in this thing and do what you want, sell it, do whatever. But Ainz was like, no, they're going to come back. Yeah. No, they're going to come back and they want to play. I know they want to play. Here's all your stuff, man. Like whenever <laughs> they come back, here's all your stuff. Let's go. Let's go vibe. You know what I mean? Which makes it sad. Yeah. Um, bittersweet. Bittersweet. Sure. But like text them or something you know what i mean like did they only f have the friendship in the game you don't <laughs> you don't got discord or something <laughs> like i don't know that's the one thing that's kind of like bro if they meant so much to you just go call them or something you know like y'all didn't keep a keep a thing outside of the game i don't know yeah that's <laughs> fair um, um it didn't really bother me that much i was just like no yeah, yeah. you know about it it's a good point to draw because like he keeps you know it's like he keeps talking about his past companions like that's such a big part of his motivations that have been um carrying him so far is like he wants to spread the name of his guild uh which is now what he's taken up as his own name to try to find his old companions and then we find um, out the whole thing at the last episode which is really or this next did, episode i think did you buy into the whole conversation with him and albedo <clears throat> um where he was basically explaining he he was trying to set up that like hey i'm gonna go fight shell and i'm gonna win but like this is gonna be really 
difficult for me, but it would be difficult for anyone, but it's also going to be difficult for me. Like, it's not like this is going to be easy, but I'm going to do it. Like that whole conversation that played out with them. I don't know. That was a little weird because I know I I don't ever feel like he's he has real danger. Bought one of his own guardians up to this point. Yeah, but I still don't feel like I feel like he's unstoppable. Yeah. Um, and that takes out the believability for me that it's difficult for him. Or yeah. I mean, even whatever he was saying was, you know, false or true or whatever he said, he said it. But I didn't believe his words, but of course Albedo would believe whatever he says, because it doesn't yeah. matter. But it, it it sort of feels like in wrestling right now, there's a <laughs> character, there's somebody that has been amazing. He's the world champion or whatever. And okay, cool. He's he's going on for a long time. He has the world, he has the belt. And now he's had the belt for a record amount of time. And now every time he faces somebody, I'm just like, why do I need to watch this? I know he's going to win. I know he's going to keep it. So what's the point? Well, I already know the outcome. And I feel like Ainz Al Gould is like Roman Reigns right now. Just all I'm saying to wrestling fans. <laughs> but I, I just feel like what what's the point of me doing this? Because I know he hasn't had some fatal flaw yet. And that would have made it more interesting for me if he had some fatal flaw. Because right now I know he's just playing the game. Um, and I feel like he's all powerful. The whole thing about him, you know, later on in the next episode, him like not having enough magic power and all that stuff. That's when it got interesting for me because I was like, oh, she might have finally got around him. But up until then, up until now, I'm just like, I haven't seen any flaw. Maybe like if he had something where like every time he casted magic, I don't know. He was debil debilitated for like five seconds. I don't know. Something to make him feel more real. Because right now he feels like a god. And that's... I don't think he's in ever any real trouble. Um, Claire says, I wonder if they did keep in contact outside of the game, but drifted apart without the common interest. They mentioned at the start how long the game was running. True. They could have just like, you know... So about that game, huh? And then that's You'll it. Start a podcast with your homies about each other. So. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> too meta. Too meta. Uh, Claire says it was interesting to me that having a setup, having set up a powerful protagonist so far above the world's power level that I doubt nations even poses a threat to him. The potential threats seem to be his current allies. It has interesting implications for future directions. See, True. That's, that's that's what I said in our first episode. Sure. <laughs> I was like, I this is what I, I want to see. I want to see him become like friends, become friendly with Erantel or something like that. But then there'd be some sort of like power struggle that's going to ultimately turn uh, like him into like a warring faction essentially he's going to become a piece on the board but more of what claire was well yeah okay i think i think claire was saying that maybe that could happen or there could just be more of him fighting his guard because so far nobody can hold a candle to him but his gotcha. guard. so could his group of people turn on him um which would be probably the only people that could hold a candle to him i uh, see i yeah. see so yeah. that would be cool what you're saying i'm thinking sure. of irantel as his ally because uh they like summoned him to talk about the situation and stuff mm -hmm. because like that that so the scouting party yes i if i multiple I of the attendants turned on him i think he's in trouble yes and that's like so that scouting party whoever it was when uh Shaltier attacked them and like she she like spotted one of them and said oh she's especially powerful but then they cast the uh then they cast the spell that like paralyzed her or whatever and she lashed out in response mm -hmm. if the like that dragon whatever that spell is if that's something that a nation has casters that can just i think that's what they alluded the to yeah i think that's what they alluded to at the end was that it was a nation that has this sort of power. Yeah, they they, they were from the slain theocracy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it turns out that they were from the slain theocracy. So then, did Irantel just like find Shaltir out there, or was it a different? I don't know. It's there's know there's all the information's <clears throat> getting out to everybody, and I mm -hmm. think that's what uh, Shaltir's biggest problem was: is that she was just moving out and just like 
kind of killing without thought, without planning. And then now there's a bunch of people that are running around tattling that there's a vampire running on the loose. Mm -hmm. Uh, Claire also says there's also no reason for them to be loyal to him beyond his position. And even that is really a lie. He's not who they think he is. I think it would be cool to explore the whole. I'm actually in a video game, man. I thought this was a video game for me. And what you believe isn't real. And I'm sorry, but here I am. But like, <clears throat> while his command isn't real, while he's not a supreme being, while he's not like in a high position, he still has all these powers. And now in this new world, he is that person. So you could say like, they may take offense to him saying, hey, up until we move to another world, I was just a guy in a in the real world i was this guy in on earth and this was just a video game to me and sure. they some of them may <clears throat> jump ship and be like what the fuck is it i thought you were my supreme whatever i thought you were god and all this stuff so they could do that but now i think in the, <laughs> go ahead what? sorry no now in the present he does have all these powers and he is that person so it would have to be i guess past tense because mm -hmm. now he he is in charge and now he is uh you know, Eins with all these insane magic spells and all that. I think with the concept of him explaining to them that like any any concept of oh like uh this was a video game before, blah 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 blah. I really think that turns into a conversation of philosophy and what is reality. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be talking to npcs about what is real uh, yeah the, I, I mean i mean sorry we don't want to go there we don't want to go there here but i'm just saying that's where that conversation turns sure uh claire says they think he is omnipotent and bordering on omniscient but he's not and is bluffing half the time yes he's he's bluffing half the time but he's making very calculated moves using educated guesses of intuition that he can call on using all the information that he has from Idrisil and all the information that he's continuing to try to gather from this new world. Mm -hmm. Does it? Do we have a name for the new world, or is it just no? We have okay. it. Yeah. You know, nobody's asked. What is this world called? Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> um. So we got to get going. Episode twelve: The Bloody Valkyrie. What happens in episode twelve? It was a big old fight. Big old fight, small little recap. Uh, Ainz returns to Shaltir and after making the proper preparations, activates uh, her by casting a super spell as his opening move. They duel over the course of the episode, and by the end, it leaves them both seemingly out of MP and mostly left to physical prowess to rely on. However, Ainz reveals that that is all according to his plan. All I have for this written on this one is Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the Sharknado, dude. He oh my god. He literally unleashes a Sharknado. And that's all. I forgot about the Sharknado. <laughs> oh my god. There's just they're just casting spells. It's just Shadow Wizard Money Gang all episode. <laughs> and then they're like, all right, time to fight, fight. Like yeah. we're, we're done. <clears throat> we're done warming up cracks neck <laughs> um i really do like uh <laughs> how video gamey this was because he was like he kind of cast around her and he was and it didn't pull aggro for her and he was like oh shit i have to actually attack her and then she's gonna aggro on me okay cool so he does does all his buffs like yeah. one right after another like for 10 15 seconds i'm like yeah this this is how it would be in final fantasy 14 i'm waiting for the because um, i'm a black mage waiting for <laughs> my my people and then i'm like okay go aggro Ruff the up. guy <laughs> and i'll buff put down my my circle and I'm like whatever and i'm like okay this brought back man ready to great. go yeah, and it's like Looks okay now. Up. Oh, the guy's already dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much what happens. Um, but he has little sticks with. Uh, we find out later they are his. Uh, we've our, we've all quick, seen it. The quick, spoilers. Uh, swap. Yeah, this is to grab. These are cash money items or whatever cash shop items that allows him to grab the world tier items which are re just really cool his opening move after all of this stuff looks insane looks gorgeous and then she finally wakes up and it's like haha i'm ready to fight and it's like okay well, <laughs> fuck that didn't do much 
Um, and um, the whole time, you know, she's still under mind control. Like she's mm-hmm. he's she's still calling him Lord Eines and stuff like that and having this playful banter, but uh she's definitely like under suggestion that she has to fight the first person mm-hmm. that attacks her, which mm-hmm. is him. And he plans on killing her, but then knowing that he has a resurrection item, so he's going to try... But not and... knowing whether or not a resurrection will even work in this world. Yes. Um, so he has that plan. That's his plan, to fight Shaltier, to get her off of mind control, kill her, resurrect her, and then hopefully she's off of the mind control whenever she resurrects. Um, and they're sort of fighting tooth and nail of right at each other they are for now they are right here on a level playing field so we think yeah going into episode 13 the final episode of season one player versus non-player Eins explains all the nuances of pvp combat to shaltier including deception and bluffing he casts a spell that turns him into a martial expert and equips the armor of lord touch me then going on to equip a cast of weapons that his old guild mates used to own, he defeats Shaltier using the power of his old friends. After yeah. Shaltier goes on the offense, on the full offense, he makes his final move using a quick cast item on a long cast super spell, leaving Shaltier defeated. Later on in the tomb of Nazarek, a resurrection is held to bring back Shaltier. However, she has no memory of their duel or of whatever it was that caused her to become mind-controlled. Ainz reassure, reassures the Guardians that this was all due to his own folly and that he will see to it that he does not make the same mistakes again. Sebus, still out on his scouting mission with Solution, Ainz reassures them that they will root out the enemy. The show goes on to give a cavalcade of setups for the following seasons before coming to a close. Wow, there's so many different little storylines. Yeah, they just go like they just go like here's a potential for an arc. Here's potential for an arc. Here's potential for an arc. Like they just started tossing them out there. Like you did you you forgot about these guys? Oh, this could happen. (laughs) Oh, what if this happens? Um, Mish, thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, hello, Mish. Everyone. I appreciate it. I hope your stream was great. Hope your stream went well. Uh, hello, really angry hedgehog. How are y'all? Um, we oh, this is a great time to do it, but we are doing a podcast. We have an anime podcast. Do we have any anime fans? If you're an anime fan, name one anime right now. Um, we do an anime podcast where we talk about different anime, and we are finishing up talking about Overlord, the season one of Overlord, and we are going to pick the next anime that we all watch together. So the, the thing is, it's kind of like an anime club where we go out and watch a couple episodes, and then you watch a couple episodes, and we come back here and we talk about it on Thursdays. Um, so we are talking about the end of Overlord, uh, season one. Don't want to spoil anything, but we're going to have to. I'm sorry if you haven't seen Overlord. You can go. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Mish. I really appreciate it. Um, Claire said, can I just say I love how stupid all their names are? I 100% believe some players chose them. Yeah, that, that makes it so much more believable than uh, other video game anime. Because it's like, Lord Touch Me, son. Like, okay, cool, whatever. And well, then like, some weird uh, that We did get that context <laughs> as to why his name is that. Which I think yeah. that's kind of funny. But, you know, the show doesn't give us that context. No. So take that how you will. Um, he class changes to warrior, which is, you know, really cool. Uh, something sort of like Final Fantasy where you just change class. Ainz is, is him. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. Ainz is him. Yeah. Because up until now, I was like, fi- fi- I was like, finally, he has some threat. Finally, yeah, he has somebody what I was thinking. that can do it. But this whole time he's had it planned out since the beginning. Yeah. He's... Because again, because again, we saw we saw we get to know Brain matches Stronoff. We see Shaltier completely <clears throat> shut down Brain, which means she would shut down Stronoff as well, hypothetically. And uh, so then to think like she's just whatever league beyond him, she's whatever league beyond beyond them. So seeing that's the first time we've seen Ainz battle somebody of this uh, caliber. 
So yeah, there, it definitely gives a sense that there is a threat on the table only for him to like after a whole episode of fighting spin the table oh how the turns have tabled you know and all <laughs> the, that the the one thing that i loved the thing i loved in this fight him pulling out all the weapons cool and then them realizing oh my god it's so and so's weapon oh this is my creator because we're getting the whole back and forth from the peanut gallery back at the base mm -hmm. as you can find the picture i don't think i have the picture up right now i can't find it uh but you see them all oh here it is they're all just talking about it they're talking mm -hmm. about what's going on them him pulling out different weapons him pulling out weapons of you know his friends and all that stuff and then pulling out the weapon of shaltier's creator and yeah. her just going like oh shit what how did he do that what's yeah. going on and he says, I named myself Eins Ulgaum because I am the strength of the guild. And he says, I'm the strength of the whole guild as he's doing this. And I'm like, oh, now it makes sense. Like him, you know, the whole little storyline of him spreading his name to get other people to find him. Yes, cool. But he's like, I name myself this because I will become the entire guild and I will take on the lives of everybody that has gone from so me. cool. And I'm like, yo, that's so dope. I love that. Uh, now, th that was like a whole little realization and him explaining yeah. it like this is what I mean. This and is I like that he he has come to that after the whole he he stored their loot he put them on statues he waited for them to return like he he had that and that time has passed and now there's only moving forward for him so what better way to move forward than by using the strength of you know the power of the entire guild all the effort that's been put into it thus far mm -hmm. in order to uh bring back one of your like loyal um what you're one of your loyal guardians mm-hmm um, super cool <clears throat> and then he's talking about that too how like he's had doubts that he's he's fit to be their leader sure but while he's fighting her he feels as though he's accomplishing something he feels sure. as though he's he deserves that mantle so as far as Ainz's story goes he does grow within this time um not like physical strength or magic power he grows emotionally i guess even though he has no emotions he grows to finally i guess now be the overlord oh he said it um at the <laughs> at the end though there's something a little weird she yeah, sees an what eye. is that yeah what is that this border and then she whispered shorty um, what is that i don't know maybe whatever is controlling her this this bit bordered on me just being like oh me wanting to know like oh what well, what's gonna happen i'm gonna watch the next episodes to me being like oh okay i just don't whatever you know what i mean so it was like in the middle for me i don't know i i felt like there's i don't know they feel like there's almost too much left on the table for me to care but then i also do kind of care you yeah. know what i mean so so her whispering shorty her seeing the eye at the corner like what is that uh and if you miss it you miss it like it's really yeah. quick somebody's controlling her of course we know that but what is that what does that mean was there somebody in her mind all this stuff so um and then it gets to the ending bit um so we see uh her getting resurrected using a ball of gold 500 million gold or whatever and then we go through all these little stories i i'm conflicted on this there's so much to set up here. So many different little stories. So many different characters that we've seen before. And also some we haven't seen. But why do they put so much at the end? <laughs> There's so much happening to set up the next season. And I'm like, there's no way they're going to hit all of these stories. Is this second season just going to be something completely different? Because right now we've, we've got like three short little stories in this one season sure they're setting up like five different things five or six different things with the other characters that could happen something else could happen it felt like a lot to set up for season two but then also why did you put so much at the end and i don't know it just didn't feel super definitive as it as other shows have been um 
yeah, I don't know. How did you feel about all the stuff at the end? I feel like for this first season, we've come so far in such a short amount of time and met so many characters and it is a lot. And it's like, you know, sometimes there's the case to be made of, you know, quality versus quantity. But I think that everything that we saw so far leading up to this point was very, was very honed in. And like the pacing was so like tight and good and just like, uh, just the pacing was great. Pacing was great all throughout up to now. And then it's it's like all of these little almost like reminders that all of these things are still going on in the world. And they might not even turn into full, complete arcs. But I think it is a good reminder that like, well, hey, if in season two we introduce uh, these two characters, like what if Gazef and Brain get introduced, but now they're actually allies and they're somehow hunting for Shaltir. Like that's just that got established in that one shot. Like, I, what are you doing out in the streets? Oh, I, I can't fight anymore because I have I ran away from the last beast that I fought. Like, what type of beast could make you run in fear? And then... That that storyline, Gaza finding brain, is the one that's probably going to make me watch season two. Because yeah. I want to see them. I don't yeah. know why. I really like Gaza. Brain was really interesting. And for them to find each other and for brain to not even be there yeah. physically or mentally or whatever... And I want to see that. Now yeah. I want to see that. So I think that's the most interesting thing for the me. Enemy is my enemy is my friend for them. I feel like it might be coming. <clears throat> the interesting Sebas thing, Gargantua, the whole Adventurers Guild, how he's the third Adamantite class. Who are the other two? You know what I mean? Uh, so and the only class above that is hero class. Yeah. Yeah. And there's quite a bit of heroes that we've met. Or we've met one, but there's quite a bit of heroes. So much story stuff. I feel conflicted because yeah. I feel like there's so much going on, so much at the end, and I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, Claire says, I don't think I've been, <clears throat> I'd have watched the next season if I'd not been sick. It was too much to care about, but having done so, I actually enjoyed the diversity of the arcs. Okay, so the next, um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I I'm conflicted because maybe I should just watch season two. I, I I think it's like kind of like what Claire was saying earlier, how like it's a, a, the show does a lot to make you care about the world. And so I think that's good that I think that's why it's good that the show ended with this is a bunch of different crumbs about what's going on in the world as the season ends. Like, sure. Uh, meanwhile, at but, the slain theocracy, meanwhile, but then at, at the blank, meanwhile, at blank. At the end, if you don't care about the world, then no, then you, yeah, then you don't. Then, care. It, then, it, then, yeah, that's definitely. Uh, so you have to have already established the care for the world for all of these stories to matter, and for you want to to want to keep going. Mm-hmm. Which I'm kind of, I kind of care about them. You know what I mean? Kind of. I care about. I care, world, kind of about, I care like the at the end. Ains was also giving like the guardians a little bit of a monologue about like yo there's there's world tier item holders out there that's something we didn't know about before there's definitely threats to us sure and i want to see in the second season something give more of a sense of urgency to the security of the tomb of nazarick or the security of this just the safety of Ains in this world same here i want that to now that we have all this established like get all those other moving parts in place and then sure. we'll just light the fire under him we're gonna go over an hour but uh we gotta rate this anime <laughs> got well, this is the end this is the last time we're gonna talk about overlord we're gonna rate it on our scale we rate it on animation storytelling and vibes and then we put it on the list of all the anime we've watched on this podcast so far so matt animation what do you rate overlord i'm giving <laughs> animation like an a plus like s minus like that range it's really good when it needs to be good in those high impact moments it's uh i never found myself looking at a looking at a a certain shot that looks out of place because when i go back to grab like the screen grabs and stuff i'm i'm looking at a lot of still frames a lot of the time sometimes i catch some janky janky frames uh (laughs) often but um like none of the high impact moments had any of that and it was all just like the budget was put exactly where it needed to be sure just some of the spells the spells looked amazing and exactly what you want to be seeing in a show like this uh with such a high magic world that you're interacting with Mm -hmm. um for animation where would you put animation 
Uh, I put it at S. I really enjoyed the animation part. I think that was the best part, other than the music, other than the voice acting was really cool. Ein's even like the uh, switching between voices was really cool too. Um, yeah, uh, like you said, the spells, the fighting stuff, the action. If you want a good action anime, this seems to have it, and it's going to continue it and more of a gamified feel as well. If you're into video games, um, I really liked it. I didn't find myself, you know. Uh, maybe some weird frames like you said but it's it's meant to be this way for some reason mm -hmm. but like i never f was it would never was jarring to see a frame or, or i never been like oh this was kind of unfinished whenever you saw them put money into the thing like the dragon it was there whenever you see them fighting and all the spell colors and all that stuff i'm a sucker for like big spells and all that beautiful colors and all that stuff so i really like the animation so i'll give it like a like an s minus like you um which is pretty good storytelling what do you think about the storytelling where you what would you rate it storytelling i think i'm in the the same boat leaning more towards like a plus but still like that a plus s minus range just like the the pacing was really good it was really fun to see a lot of the uh a lot of the like deconstruction of isekai in some ways uh but also like have it still be uh video gamey um even though like uh it's supposed to be like a real world they're in he's bringing in all this knowledge from idrisil which we never get to experience in the show but yeah. we get a pretty good idea of what it is just by you know all of the comparison he comparisons that he makes mm -hmm. um I personally just ate up the story. I loved it. Um, how, how would you rate the storytelling? I think a B plus, B around there. Again, I really didn't like how they crammed it all. I understand. I get it. Um, but this whole last like four episode arc just kind of, I wasn't oh, as excited. Wasn't excited for this last four. I, I was excited for the battle, mm -hmm. but the setup was a little clunky uh, for me. And I was just kind of left with like questions and I, I was just kind of, it was kind of weird. Uh, the, the jumping on point here, jumping onto a moving train. Uh, but throughout the whole thing, the storyline was cool. The, the characters were really nice. I really enjoyed the characters more. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It was just a little weird for me. So I, I would say B. Um, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Vibes. Vibes uh i'm giving vibes uh for me uh an s yeah uh vibes being like you know the music the the characters um i really got off put in the first episode um with some of the fan servicey stuff but then like you know it it really chilled out with that immediately <laughs> yeah and that was not there was ever really one, a problem there so was one was more really thing cool. whenever shaltier got resurrected she was being held by <laughs> uh uh, and then she was like, oh, is this is this where my first time will happen? I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> they're still doing that. <laughs> yeah, but it, it it chilled out a lot. Um, but like you said, the music <clears throat> is so good. And um, and just uh, all the characters are really cool. I like all the characters uh, They're They're <sighs> the world that it's set up, everything. I yeah. I really enjoyed the <clears throat> show start to finish. Um, and I'm giving it an S for vibes. Where would you put the vibes? Um, well, CZ said animes do be doing that at the end quite often. <clears throat> yeah, they, they do put it, I don't know. It just felt like a lot. If you, if you see the last five minutes, it was like six different stories. And I was like, oh, this is a lot. If they would have done like one or two. Okay, cool. But the credits were rolling for a long time. The credits were going and they were going through like five different stories. I'm like, okay, this is kind of a while. Like what's going on? <clears throat> um, vibes were a... I would give vibes an A for me. Um, good vibes. Like the character. Like the situation. I like, again, um, where they're going with it. Maybe I had too high expectations uh, for, you know, after last episode we did it. But, again, the, the last little arc just kind of fell flat for me. Um, but I do enjoy the characters. I love the banter between the characters. The vibes were fun. And then the vibes were serious. And then it was just like... I don't know. It was a mix of things. I really like it. I'm not saying I wouldn't recommend it. I'm not saying it's um, sucks, no, but no. it was it was an A. Vibes mm -hmm. are an A for me. Um, uh, like, 
Oh, Claire says, overall, I was conflicted. I wouldn't have made it through under other circumstances. Certainly wouldn't have watched the second season, but having done so, I enjoyed it. Is that me being slow to understand it uh, cares about the world? I don't really know. I don't know. Oh, are we going to see a different final rating? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know if I would have continued. Again, I'm conflicted if I would have continued after episode at the end of episode eight or nine whenever uh they started that whole next little four episode arc i don't know if i left off episode what was it 10 i would have just been like "Hmm, okay i'm good you know what i mean do you sucks do you think they should have put that episode 10 like at episode nine and then pushed those other ones like forward and then let us known Shaltier, because like there's a when uh when they're about to yes. go fight Clementine and Kaj and Albedo's there's somebody calling him. They're like, hey, but we need to talk to you about something. He's like, hold it, I'm busy. And then they start casting all the PvP spells. I'm pretty sure that was them trying to contact him about, hey, Shaltier's like gone AFK or whatever. Maybe that might have been that a little switch between nine and ten to prolong the battle with Ains. Yeah. And then put them, you know, just like give that like context this. that, oh my God, this happened to Shelt here, but Ainz is busy mm-hmm. with this. So, like, what'll happen? To I that? think I would have liked and then that. Better. He returns to that. I think that would have been better for me, but because it, like it tries to set it up and then give urgency to it and then he acts on it all right away. So, I can see how that kind of <sighs> could muddy the water in that last arc for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, Claire, so I think they spend too long with the fan service and establishing things I just don't care about early on. I didn't really understand what I was getting till halfway through season two. Gotcha. So you mean I got to watch more of it? Um, so we got our first, <laughs> we got our, uh, talking about Overlord. We're done. And now we rated it. Our final rating for Overlord season one is drum roll. I ranked it an A, Matt ranked it an S, Overlord is done, we are done with Overlord, rank A and S. Let's see where it goes on to the board of the other anime that we've already seen. Boom. I had to condense Matt's S's, because we've got a lot of Matt S's now, so that's really Mm -hmm. cool. Um, Yeah, Overlord is our inverse psychopaths. Oh, yes, (laughs) because I put psychopaths as A. Yeah. or s and then you put it as a yeah so those are all the anime we've seen on the left is me on the right is matt and that's where we rate it on the s a c d f <laughs> tiers there Boom. but now we have to go on a different adventure scrap everything you know forget everything you know we're done with overlord now <laughs> we go on to the next one time for the totally not sponsored crunchy crunchy bowl of anime rolls <laughs> yo we should get a sponsor we should get like i don't know the Red Bull anime chest <laughs> brought to you by no, we're going to pick a new anime, watch uh, a new anime. When we're done with one begins another. And these are the anime in the chest name in the chat. If you're live right now on Twitch, which one you would like to see, but it is completely random. And Matt is going to has a physical chest and he's going to pick out a new anime for all of us to watch. If you're a fan of the show. What adventure we're going on next, we don't know until right now. We're going to watch the first four episodes. We're going to finish possibly the first arc of the anime. So whatever it is, we'll know here. <clears throat> it's been a while since a CZ pick. Which one's yours? I think CZ has... um, What was it? Black Summoner? <laughs> you picked a CZ one. Wait, really? <laughs> What CZ's is CZ? back with the bribes. This one has CZ's names written on it. This oh, one's have Dang and Rampa. Dang and Rampa. We got Dang and Rampa next. Oh boy! <clears throat> right there. I've avoided the series for a long time. I don't know anything about it. Have you seen any either. of the Dang and Rampa no, anime? No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Dang and the Rampas. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I just know it has a little doll. A little a little bear or something that's sentient maybe or he just looks like a bear dang and rampa season one watch episode one through four one through four that's of dang and rampa i guess i think there's multiple of them or multiple games of them i don't know 
is it games based on a show or show based on games <clears throat> i don't know oh <laughs> dang and rampa next week thir- by thursday next week go watch episode one through four of dang and rampa it's po- probably on country roll most likely on season netflix season one is season one. 13 episodes as well okay then we can do the same thing that we did uh for overlord should we do should we do our second episode of it watch the five instead of four sure. that way we can not go over potentially not go over our hour next time mm-hmm. For sure, because we are over the anime hour. We are over the anime uh, hour. This Claire is says, what we call after anime <laughs> hour. <laughs> the after hours. I'm curious how well it will translate from a game. It certainly can't hurt the game's problem. Is they badly need an editor to cut, cut, cut. <laughs> uh, and Dan says, ooh, I'm going to be jumping in blind to this one as well. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll see what's going on. Episode one through four of Rampa. Never seen it. Don't know anything about the story. Um, so, yeah watch that for next week and this has been the jules and matt anime hour matt where can they find you on the internet uh when we're not here talking about anime you can find me on my twitch at it's uh sorry at matt underscore galley or you could find me on any of my socials just add an its at the front at its matt underscore galley when we're not here talking about the animes where can the people find you um here or on youtube youtube.com slash jules the human where you can watch these anime uh hour episodes if you missed any of them you can go and watch the full episodes all of our catalog is there on youtube as well youtube.com slash jules the human there's a whole playlist of all of the podcasts that we've already done all the anime that we've already seen on spotify as well spotify uh just look up the jules and matt anime hour and you'll be able to find us uh and watch us on spotify if you prefer to do that but on x.com slash jules the human uh on threads jules hey i started a new uh instagram jules the collector go check it out i've been uh posting all my manga books that i've been reading and some of the the vinyl that i've been getting so if you want to go follow a new instagram it's probably over there uh jules the human or jules dot the collector dot jules dot the dot collector something like that go whatever you know what funny um thanks so much we'll see you next week one through four of danganronpa we'll be talking about that And we'll see you next time. Bye.